Yo, MC Starman here with Dayana Robinson. Oh, wow. Amazing. We um, want to share with you an amazing success. We had our last video had over 2,000 views and made 80 new subscribers. Um, and so that's really big news for us. So that was only the second video that made it up to over 2,000. So thank you so much. And 80 new subscribers, we're up to 1,260. Um, that's uh, incredible. Almost 450 new subscribers in the last three months. So thank you so much um, for supporting the channel and for supporting our videos. And I think one of the things that um, really helped or what I'm hearing from the comments, because beautiful comments, beautiful questions, um, and we'll talk about it, some of them today. I know one lady asked about Pluto, so we're going to flash out Pluto today a little bit. And we always talk about Pluto in such <laughs> kind words uh, for our master. Um, but um, going more into depth in this new series that we're working on about the inner planets. So we fleshed out Mercury in more details. And today we're going to flesh out Venus. It'll be exciting. Venus is ingressing into Scorpio, and that's going to be the theme of this video. Mm -hmm. Shall we show them what we have prepared? The inner planets, the archetypes, and their cycles. Venus and Scorpio is ingressing into Scorpio on December 4th, and it's going to stay there until December 30th. We're on the fourth today doing this video and the myth of Persephone. We're going to tell the story of the myth of Persephone and transformation through relationships. Ouch. <laughs> Fun. Mm -hmm. Relationships and transformation. Two um, words that go well together um, or that are part of Kind of one without the other, really. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So today, Venus is coming into Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So we're going to flesh that out for our uh, viewers. But uh, Pluto's also been in, I mean, Venus has also been in square to Pluto for a few days and will continue to be so for a few more days. So we have Venus entering Scorpio here in a 90 degree angle with Pluto in Capricorn. So Pluto in Capricorn, Venus entering Scorpio, fixed signs. So how does that feel to you and how has your mood been? Um, The last 24 hours I've uh, been tender. I keep saying I'm molting. I feel like I'm molting. Pretty worn thin right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Venus, Pluto, and Venus in Scorpio. Of course, um, Pluto is ruled, I mean, Scorpio is ruled by Mars, but also co-rulership of Pluto. And, you know, Scorpio is associated with the descent into the darkness. Um, you know, with fall, we've been talking about quite a bit. While Mars was in Scorpio, um, much different flavor, Mars in Scorpio. <laughs> then Venus and Scorpio. So what do you understand about Venus and Scorpio? What do I understand about Venus and Scorpio? Um, I know that Venus likes to be at home in Libra and in Taurus. So when Venus goes into Scorpio, um, it's considered its detriment, which means that Venus is exalted in Taurus. But when it's in the opposite sign, for instance, right now in Scorpio, it's in its detriment. So it's not a strong place for Venus in general. So when a planet is in the opposite sign of the sign that it rules, mm -hmm. it will be in its detriment. Mm -hmm. So then in Scorpio, Venus is in its detriment. How is that experienced? Um, usually that it takes a lot more work to be like happy or contained or in a good place in the psyche has been my experience. Well, Venus is, is uh, you know, Venus is about the joy of the world, you know, bring mm -hmm. the joy to the world. And, you know, it's about, you know, what pleases me and what I like. Mm -hmm. 
what is that part of the psyche that's involved with uh, deciding the things that I love and where is the love, right? Mm -hmm. And Scorpio is about death and rebirth. And so then it's like, well, you know, so when you have people that have Venus and Scorpio, well, they tend to be kind of, you know, Venus with the slight touch of witch to it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's the dark, the love of the darkness, the love of, you know, tend to be, you know, a very deeply mysterious feminine energy that's very attractive and 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 kind of dark and instinctual and <laughs> excuse me deep deep um <clears throat> motivation to to dive deep into the psyche. So there's a little bit of a priestess there. There's a little bit of um, <clears throat> uh, a need to go into these deep, mysterious places. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now Venus in transit through Scorpio. What will that mean for us? Uh, Venus in transit, so it's got a shorter time limit. It's not necessarily in your birth energetic makeup, but it's going to be something that we collectively all go through. And depending on your chart, you may be feeling it um, more than others will. But I think to some level, we're all going through it. And it's going to be probably bringing a lot of awareness to our to our needs to transform. And because Venus is about our relationships, I think that's probably a huge piece of why you called it transformation through relationships. There's going to be a need to transform either how we show up in our relationships, our relationships in general, and that can be externally. And it's even just the relationships within ourselves. Maybe we're going to go deeper into why we do things or investigate whether these things are good for us that we choose to do and how, how we use and share energy and our values. Well, it goes really well with the, the winter solstice, which is mm -hmm. traditionally uh, called you know the Persephone season so why don't we show our uh... Ooh, right before we get into the next slide that brings me up to the candle oh um, yes so this is the first week of December here and in the northern hemisphere it's Christmas time coming up and so we call this the first week of Advent is a traditional European way of celebrating the darker days and so traditionally one of the methods would be to have these four candles that you see and then every week you add a candle so right now we're in week one we have one candle lit um, and they all symbolize different things in our life so the first week is about the shells and the stones and the rocks and everything below the surface Venus going into Scorpio is kind of appropriate for that it's everything kind of below the surface because um, Scorpio tends to be the deep deep waters and things that are not necessarily seen at a first glance um, and then over the weeks, we'll go into the plant kingdom, honoring the animal kingdom, and then the human kingdom is the four candles there. Um, but the last other piece I wanted to share was in Advent spirals, um, people come together and they all have a candle and then they one by one take a turn. They all come into a dark room <laughs> and go and walk into the center of the room and light your candle and then walk back out and place your candle somewhere along the spiral. And so when you go into this room, it's very dark with usually one or maybe a couple candles. And by the time everybody's had a chance to light their candle, the whole room is so much lighter and brighter. And between people doing their walk, it's usually just some maybe very melancholy or soft music. And you're in kind of like a, a dark group meditation, as it were, um, which feels really beautiful given this time of Scorpio to Sagittarius and the shifting time where the sun and Mars just went into Sagittarius but Venus and Scorpio there's still this um, crossing the threshold and allowing what needs to die to be reborn and going into the dark and so it feels like a really beautiful practice for the times we're in. Of course this is the um, this is you know been a practice that's been Christianized but it's mm -hmm. all it has pagans or pagan origins and basically, their celebration of the solstice, the first two weeks leading to the solstice, and the last, the two weeks after the solstice. So they're the four 
darkest uh, um, <clears throat> uh, weeks of the year, but it's also the time where the sun visibly goes to the most northern point and then starts coming back so that the days are reaching their shortest and then boom, they start growing again. So then from, from many, many, many years, millennia, this was also always associated with the celebration of the dark. You know, it was known as Saturnalia. Um, the Saturnalia being a, a celebration of Saturn and 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 uh, and the darkness of the year, but also of the rebirth of the light, which is imperceptible at the beginning, but uh, but nonetheless we celebrate that through that beautiful practice. So you can do that. Um, you know, lighting some candles at this time of the year and having some solstice celebrations. We'll talk about that more next week when we do our solstice video. We'll have two candles then. <laughs> okay, so now we can introduce our video. <laughs> I hope you've stayed with us so far. And that's what we've been finding out is that uh, the average view is about five minutes. Uh, uh, so... But uh, as the ones that are uh, following our channel um, mm, very loyally, um, there's about 200, 250 of you that go all the way through. And that's why we do these videos. And so that's the chart of Venus entering in the Scorpio. So the myth of Persephone, transformation through relationships. So we talked about rulerships and detriment. And then we're going to talk about, and we talked about natal and transit. We talked about it a little bit, then we have to talk more about it. And that's the point of these video series is to flesh out. And in 29 days, Venus will be going into Sagittarius. So we'll be doing these about once a month on Venus. And we talk about, we're going to talk about the Venus cycle, Aurora and Fortuna. And that's about understanding the meaning of Venus while it's transiting and the charge that it has. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about Venus and Scorpio square Pluto, transformations through relationship. And we'll tell the myth of Persephone and what we gain from it. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of material for you. And we've already started a little bit. So... <clears throat> So what is the myth of Persephone? Should we start there, maybe? Sure. The myth of Persephone is a myth that is ancient, as ancient as time, really. It has its origin in Babylonian times, where it was Eris Kigal, um, which was, you know, so, so it's a very old myth. In ancient Greece, it was celebrated as the Eleusinian Mysteries. Mm. So every year during the equinoxes and the solstices, there'd be these ceremonies about this transformation myth or this transformation symbolism associated with the change of the seasons. And so, you know, since time immemorial, We've been familiar with the equinox and the solstices as being the four most important <laughs> transition in the uh, cycles of the year. You know, the equinox when the days and the nights are equal and the solstices, the longest day of the year and the shortest day of the year. Winter solstice is the shortest day of the year, longest night. So uh, these have been with us forever and the Eleusinian mysteries were celebrated and the myth of Persephone was reenacted in these ceremonies. Mm -hmm. So I have some pictures that let's uh, show the pictures. We're gonna be jumping ahead here, boom. Okay, so we have Venus and Scorpio, next slide. And next slide. Okay, so we jumped ahead. So here's Persephone here, right before she gets kidnapped. 
she's picking flowers in a field. And then Pluto here comes with his chariot and kidnaps her and brings her down. You see the horse is going out into the fiery hell, right? And so then you got Persephone in the arms of Pluto, Hades, and we have the descent into hell. So, yeah, so then these, you know, this is old, old mythology. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and so the story goes that Persephone is picking the flowers and she gets kidnapped by Hades. And Hades forcibly brings her down to hell and makes her his wife. And Demeter, the mother of Persephone, Demeter would be the moon, and Venus would be, um, uh, uh, I mean, Persephone would be Venus, and Hades, the lord of hell, would be Pluto. So whenever in a uh, chart that you see, if Venus and Pluto are an angle in an individual's chart, then there's usually some kind of constellation of the myth of Persephone. There is this story of the ancestral rape, whether something that I experienced myself or is in my ancestral line, the Venus-Pluto angle usually will tell me that this myth is active in the person's psyche. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so when Venus... Persephone is kidnapped by Hades, Pluto. There's um, a backlash to that, and Demeter misses her daughter, and so all of nature goes dormant, which is symbolized by winter. Mm -hmm. Persephone become, kids, gets kidnapped by the Lord of Hell, and all of nature goes dormant as a retaliation of the mother for the loss of her daughter. Now, all the gods, they are quite perturbed by the whole event. So they send Mercury, Hermes, to advocate and to make a deal with Pluto. They say, okay, she's your wife now. You know, you lucked out. You got the goddess of love as your wife. And, you know, this is pretty drab out of here. So she's really brightened things up for you. Why don't you allow her to rise up to the world six months out of the year? You can have her six months. Some places they say three months versus nine months. <coughs> Depends on who tells the story. And Pluto accepts the deal. And so then Venus rises, Persephone rises again and returns to the world. And that's what was celebrated at the equinoxes and the solstices is the return to life of the feminine principle. Now, in archetypal view, I'm just reading the book about the great mother that Eric Neumann wrote, a, 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 um, an associate of Carl Jung, a disciple of Carl Jung that became a, a, a contributor to Carl Jung, his book on the great mother is a, a fantastic study of the archetype of the great mother as the moon, but also as Venus. Mm -hmm. So we have the terrible great mother and we have the young feminine, the young feminine, you know, the, the power of the moon into the, into the the you know the the giving birth of the world through the darkness and then the feminine core principle the 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 venus principle about <clears throat> uh, uh the the process of transformation so venus and this relationship and this myth of persephone is about the tr the transformation that occurs in an individual you know, then that's why we got the title of the video, you know, transformation through relationships. You know, Jung says, you know, what, what is love? 
Love is the instrument of fate. Love is the instrument of fate that we love. And through that love, we are becoming transformed. It's like the love is leads us to what we need for our evolution. Mm. So, and that's symbolized by the myth of Persephone. How's that? Beautiful. Interesting that, um, yeah, very uh, apparent in time to talk about it with Venus square Pluto ingressing signs is makes it extra illuminated. Well, and then we have the solstice coming up, but also Venus is in square to Pluto, and at the beginning of winter, we're going to have a Venus conjunction with Pluto. Mm. So this will be, and then we're going to be watching what Venus does throughout the month. We have some slides for you to show you all the things that Venus will do throughout the month. <coughs> I think we're, um, go ahead. I was just going to say, you're talking a bit about this book you're reading, and it reminded me how, like, when you asked me, for instance, what Venus and Scorpio is like, there's my experience and what I've learned and witnessed and read about, but then there's like pop astrology and pop astrology has a little bit more of a, how do I say, like raunchy and simplified version of what Venus and Scorpio is versus a more Jungian approach has a lot more depth and meaning to it, I find, and resonates a lot more. Um, do you, can you speak to that? Well, I think that in the myth of Persephone, you know, when when Persephone rises up from hell and returns to the world, mm -hmm. what do you think her psychology is then? Probably pretty, um, I don't know, grateful to be coming back maybe, but also a whole different version of herself, a lot stronger. Uh, well, a lot more confident, right? Yeah. Like, who's going to fuck with me, you know? <laughs> I'm the wife of hell. You know, so there's a lot more. And I did a video, I called it Priestess Rising. Mm. And I think that that's the great power <clears throat> of Venus and Scorpio is that we have a priestess mm. archetype, which is not so conducive to a Barbie kind of life, you know, yeah. which uh, we, you know, in the shadow expression of Venus in her society is like a Barbie doll, right? But Venus is not like that. Venus in Scorpio is the priestess. And and so the priestess archetype um, is, is a very beautifully put in structure because, yes, you know, and, um, and um, Jung and um, a gentleman, which I'm forgetting his name, but maybe I'll remember, um, uh, Charles Karenyi, uh, Charles Karenyi and Jung uh, wrote a book on the mother archetype as well. Mm -hmm. um, and in that book, they talk about, so why is the moon, the great mother, invested in Venus, Persephone, going into hell? Venus's initiation. Venus's initiation. So then the myth of Persephone is a myth of initiation mm -hmm. going down to hell. But why would the mother be invested in that? Because her daughter will become self-sufficient or well, well, they point out that that's because that's how the mother became the mother herself. Right. It's her experience of the whole thing. The natural next generation. And then, if you re read the uh, the um, the astrology of fate, Liz Green makes the point that really it's the it's the it's it's you know the the goddess of of destiny mm -hmm. Moira that is actually the ruler of hell. So really, the whole myth is a acknowledgement that this hell is really actually the home of the mother and that this is the initiation right into you know some people say that the union between venus and uh, pluto the sun becomes uh, uh, dionysus mm. uh, which is interesting i haven't found any confirmation of that but some folks say that so <laughs> you know, so there, you know, there's a lot to be unpacked, 
And to the series on Venus, every month we're going to, I'm going to tell a different myth uh, associated with Venus so that over the months there we're going to become familiar. But this one of the myth of Persephone with Venus and Scorpio seemed to be very fitting, isn't it? It is. Just while we're in this kind of zone right now, do you want to quickly speak? You're saying there's the Venus before she goes down and then the Venus after. And that made me think of the two forms of Venus. Well, let's go back to the chart and show sure. that on the chart. So if you look at the chart, well, maybe actually, um, well, let's let's go at, look at Aurora. Let's go That's see the what picture. That's going to, yeah. Yes. So the two forms. So Aurora and Fortuna. So these are two faces of Venus. So let me show you on the table. So, all right. So here's the sun. Okay. And the ascendant is where the sun rises. <laughs> so in the current chart that I have, sun, the ascendant is here, and the descendant is there, and then the midheaven and the bottom of the sky, the IC and the MC. So the ascendant is where the sun rises. All the planets, they move this way. But the day moves that way. The other way. No, that way. The planet, everything, yeah. yeah. So that what happens is when the planet crosses the ascendant, it rises. So on the chart that we have, the 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 Mars and the Sun are the first planets to rise, and Venus has already risen, and the Moon is high up in the sky at the moment of Sun and Mars rising. The ascendant, everything below the ascendant is the horizon, so everything here is night. The only two planets that are visible before the sun rises is the moon and Venus. So let's fast forward. So, so this is the, the descendant here. So now the moon is setting and the Venus sets and then we have sunset. And then, you know, so opposite the, 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 the descendant is the ascendant. So now the moon is rising and Venus is rising and then the sun and Mars is rising. So when the Venus rises before the sun, it's known at, as the morning star. And so that's the aurora. Aurora <coughs> is the l'aurore uh, en français. Uh, uh, it's the, it's, uh, what do you call it in English? Um, lobe, no. What? Lobe en français, l'aurore. It's, uh, you know, the first light of the day. What is it? Oh. Dawn, dawn. Mm. Okay, so at, so if you wake up before dawn or right at dawn mm -hmm. and it's a clear night, tomorrow morning, you'll see the moon and you'll see Venus very clearly. Beautiful. So then she is the first star to rise before the sun, depending on where actually Mars actually is rising right before the sun. So if you were like on the ocean, you would see right before sunrise, you would see Mars rising, the red planet. And then you would see Venus up and you would see the moon up. So now Venus is in Aurora. In her Aurora, she is much, a uh, phase, she is much more um, introverted. Mm. So then as Venus goes, so Venus is moving. She's going through Scorpio and she's catching up and she's going to catch up to the sun probably when the sun is in Capricorn and then we'll have the conjunction of Venus and the sun. <laughs> so Venus and the sun conjunction. Now from then on, Venus 
And we'll be going through this as we go along. But then Venus, when it passes, now it becomes the evening star. Fortuna. So, Fortuna. Mm. That's riches. Venus is in her extroverted phase, and she's at the brightest, the highest she's become. And she becomes really, really high and really, really bright. <laughs> we saw her this summer that way. And then, boom, she turns retrograde and drops from the sky and passes. And as the second conjunction with the sun and goes 48 degrees back and then becomes the aurora Venus and turns direct and comes back again like that. So aurora is the introverted Venus. So this Venus in Scorpio is a very introverted, priestly kind of Venus. And we're going to talk more about Aurora and Fortuna. But does that answer your question, my dear? Mm -hmm. Wanted to share the two, the two sides of Venus there. Let's go to the important dates, because we've done a lot of material. And I wanted to, um, to offer an opportunity for you. Or maybe you can think about this, okay? And okay. we'll do it on stage there, just to put you on the spot. Great. What if you did some research for us, for the inner planets in the signs, and maybe did an herbal section to these inner planets? I love that. Yeah. That would kind of stretch you. And then it would give us like, okay, now Venus will be in Scorpio. What kind of medicine would be associated with Venus and Scorpio? And how can the person best support mm -hmm. that? You know, when we went to the new format with a new moon and a full moon and we didn't do medicines, the first comment came up is, hey, we miss our medicines. And so I had to explain to them that, okay, the medicines are going into the um, the videos on the sun in each sign. Mm -hmm. And so, but uh, here's another opportunity to I'll deepen our work. Bit. I'd have, yeah, I definitely have to do pre-research. Right away, I would say that because Venus is in Fortuna and Venus is about your no, no. energy Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. Aurora, it's about bringing energy back into yourself um, versus expressing it out to the world. And then Scorpio is like the depths of our blood and needing to transform old blood cells and say like things like Gung Kwai. There's so many things pop in my head. I'd want to research more for future videos, but a lot of <laughs> blood purifiers would be really good for right now. Blood purifier, but Somebody also... Wrote on the last video, intermittent fasting, great time for intermittent fasting. Good mm -hmm. big good call also um venus and scorpio and with the persephone season and everything that's going on with pluto i think a, a renewal of what it is you know so spending some time in checking in with your inner venus in the depths of hell and and so it's a little bit of a depressive time you know it's you know the light is minimal you know i don't know and we, when when it rains this much on Vancouver Island, we have this much to tell ourselves. We say, "Well, at least it's snowing everywhere else." <laughs> but it's been but pretty. The snow is brighter. <laughs> <laughs> snow is brighter, yes, but it's a lot colder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yes, we're uh, having um, uh, the dark time of the year, and so really resourcing ourselves with creative practices and practices like this of Advent, you know? So lighting one candle for the first week, two candles the second week, three candles the third week, and four candles, and doing that as a ritual every day. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that. I have, We have our own little one here. Mm -hmm. Yay. All right, so... Sure. Both yeah. The dates? Yeah, let's do that. Or alchemical opportunities, as we've also called it, which I love. Actually, let's go back to... Uh... <laughs> so you were saying something really important about um, pop astrology versus alchemical astrology. Mm, yeah. So in, 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 in pop astrology, we're really concerned, and that's a, something that came up a lot 
in the last questions on the videos is, you know, we're concerned with, you know, my moon in Virgo, my sun in Sagittarius. What does it mean? You know, what do these things mean? And, and as we begin our studies on astrology, these things, you know, we become, you know, moon and Virgo in the first house. What does that mean? And we become familiar with these knowledge. But uh, Jung looked at astrology quite differently. He, he looked at the angular relationship with the planets being the psychological and spiritual complexes that animate the individual. So he put more importance on, okay, you can say the sun is in Sagittarius in the first house. And that would say a lot about the individual, but that the sun is in conjunction with Mars in square to Saturn. That's a lot more. It says that we have a very disciplined, fiery personality that, you know, so then we're starting to flesh out the personality and that's kind of what we do with the healer and the dreamer is we try to read the charts in terms of these alchemical opportunities. So the alchemists, what they did is they would plan these elaborate processes of transformation and then they would look at the astrological charts and they say, this is the time where we need to do, they would look for the kairos. Kairos means magical time. Mm. So these magical times are opportunities for transformation. And that's where astrology as an alchemical tool becomes so important. So now we're going to look at the alchemical tools <laughs> after that beautiful introduction. Thank you for that. That was Very fun. Well. That was a good introduction. I love it. Good reminder. So... We have Venus and Pluto on December 3rd. So today was December 4th. Um, so on the 3rd. It went in today it, at 10.40 a.m. It went into Scorpio, but the square to Pluto was on the 3rd. And it's active from November 30th to December 7th. That's the Venus square Pluto. And we talk lots about that. On the 5th, Venus will be trying Saturn, and that starts on the 3rd to the 9th. So, <laughs> so right now, Venus is in trying the Saturn and in squaring the Pluto. Mm -hmm. So that's the alchemical opportunity to give form, Saturn, to the myth of the transformation and the myth of Persephone. So now we look at these moments as opportunities for transformation. So we look at the 3rd of December, the 5th of December, and then we look at the orb. Orb is four degrees on each side that tell us really the real power point of that Venus Pluto and the Venus Saturn. So November 30th to December 7th, December 3rd to December 9th. Then we have December 10th, we have Venus opposite Jupiter. That's from December 7th to 14th. Now we haven't fleshed that one out. Venus opposite Jupiter. Oh, wow. should we finish this and finish up with that or just pause? Well, let's just give it a quick little, little Venus Jupiter. So Let's Venus in opposition to Jupiter in Scorpio Taurus. And we talked about Mars in Sagittarius being a rulership loop. So then we have Venus in opposition to Jupiter uh, with Mars also in angle, sextile to Mars. A uh, semi-sextile. Should we show them how that works? Well, let's show them on chart. Might be going over their head. Okay, sure. So, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn, or sorry, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus are all doing a dance right now together. So, well, um, Venus and Mars are not in angle, but the Venus-Jupiter opposition. So, 
Should but, we start, since it's about Venus, start with Venus? What do you mean? To show why we're saying that they're all together in this? Well, we talked about that already. We talked about how Venus is ruled by Mars. Not and on camera. Yes, I believe we did on camera. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, did we not? All right. I believe we did at the beginning. Venus is, in, is ruled by Mars in Scorpio. Mars is ruled by Jupiter in Taurus. And Taurus is ruled by Venus. So Venus, Mars... Jupiter end up ruling the whole chart in a loop like that. So then as we go through this process of Venus moving into opposition with Jupiter and Mars, so we haven't talked about that, you're saying? I don't think we fleshed it out, no. Okay, well, did we flesh it out now? Yeah, they're all going to be in a dance together. So that dance of Venus... Jupiter, Mars, so that's the captain of the team, right? We talked about, and then the, so that's the Jupiter, Mars, and the descent into hell, and the descent into transformation, and so there's a lot of power associated with this experience, so even though this may not be pleasant, it's all, it's, it's going to be a source of great inspiration, and tremendous transformation with you know with Mars and Jupiter boosting it up. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> when I think about it, I also think about how like this fall we had this big Venus retrograde. Venus was in Leo for a long time, and then it finally went into Virgo, and it took up a lot of the energy the last half this year. And then Mars has been conjunct the Sun. So then after that happened, Mars kind of took the show for quite a while. And now they're kind of having to work together almost. And it's like the teacher of Jupiter is having to like help them find union or help them work together is how I see it. Well, this is the point with this video series that we're starting. Is It's to really put focus on the personal planets and their ongoing dance and relationship with each other. Mm. You know, the Venus and Mercury always travel with the sun. When Mercury reaches 22 degrees past the sun, it turns retrograde and goes back. And it's always 22 degrees at the furthest point from the sun on either side. 44, 46 degrees for Venus. It will go 46 ahead and it will turn retrograde, go 46 behind and come direct. And so these two planets turn around the sun and they're, they're basically following the sun <laughs> while Mars is constantly, well, Mars is the first outer planet. So it doesn't have that relationship with the sun that Mercury and Venus do, but, you know, every, you know, because Mercury and, and, and Venus go you know, direct and retrograde, direct and retrograde. They're always going back and forth around the sun. And then, and then, so then there's two conjunctions, three conjunctions of Mars and Mercury. No, depends. Sometimes there'll be three conjunctions of Mars and Mercury. And, and, and when Mars goes retrograde, and so the relationship between Mars and Mercury and the relationship between Mars and Venus are some of the most important relationships in astrology and to get to understand them fully and how they support your transformation and your evolution is a finer part of astrology that we see that we seek to introduce you through to in this video series and what is it called <laughs> the inner planets what is it through the archetypes yeah, the archetypes and the cycles. Mm -hmm. And so that was our first video on Venus. And uh, I think we have one more important date. Oh, yes. Let's finish up. A couple days. more. Okay. Then we did the Aurora and Fortuna. And then, oh, uh, yeah, we have the Venus. And then this is very interesting for the solstice. And leading to Christmas from the 18th to the 24th, we have a Venus opposite Uranus. What is that going to feel like? Sudden inspirations on how to love ourselves? 
I don't know. <laughs> well, so that's good. That's good on the positive side. On the dark side, on the dark side of it, or on the uncomfortable side, is uh, not feeling really secure about the expression of our love. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, well, you know, you got to look at both, you know, the Definitely. positive and the negative yeah. of it. Uranus tends, the ground tends not to be very solid, especially with, you know, but then Venus rules Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus, but Venus is in his detriment. So something to keep an eye on and keep notes on it. And then on Christmas Day, we have Venus neptune trine trine's more of a harmonious energy than opposition and venus is the is is neptune is the higher octave of venus in terms of universal love versus personal love and neptune mm -hmm. is in ruling sign of pisces so then that might feel really welcome after the tension of venus opposite uranus <laughs> we may uh, have a very poetic christmas uh, but for sure, uh, you have your alchemical opportunities, and we fleshed out Venus through Scorpio for you. How was that for you, my dear? Good. Went over a lot of different things. I love it. It's good. Packed with information. Let us know what you think. Ask questions. We thank you so much for supporting our mm -hmm. channel. Let's get these things going. We're a little bit organic about how we do things. <laughs> and a lot of you have told us that you like it and excuse my cough it's been the season i'm doing a lot better and um, how are you doing my dear i'm good good enough <laughs> you're, go you're gonna look forward yeah. to a little holiday aren't you there's not one in sight but let's hope <laughs> well you've been pushing yeah. pretty hard and that's over this week right but then catching up with everything huh i work in retail so it'll be over after christmas really okay but, yeah. well big changes for you and hopefully that leads to big changes coming big and better how about you how do you feel well we'll talk about it next week when we talk about the solstice and the equinox lots to talk about sure. and we'll do the uh, new moon in Sagittarius will be very That'll interesting be as well. Over and out. Bye for now. Be well.